This chapter will focus on creating a time dimension. It is important to know what level of detail you want prior to building a time dimension. For example, your business metric may only be relevant for yearly data, so it wouldn't make sense to create a time dimension with a monthly level. A year level would suffice. Let's start off by going to the Design Explorer and clicking on Dimensions Context menu. Next, click on the New Time Dimension menu item to create a new time dimension. Type in a meaningful name. Let's use 3.1.2 so it's easy to associate this tutorial with this dimension for future reference. The content pane will now show the many properties of a time dimension. Don't be overwhelmed. We're going to go through a common setup so you can get familiar with the interface. Let's ignore this checkbox for now and get back to it later. The start and end date make up the time period this dimension will be restricted to. It's good to choose a time period that you know that data exists. For example, you may only have data between January 1, 2006 and January 1, 2008. You should set the start and end date accordingly. In some cases, data is refreshed daily, so you would want the end date to be today's date. Conceptually, this means that the end date will change as time progresses. That is, if the dashboard with this dimension in it was open today, the end date would automatically use today's date. To accomplish setting the end date up like this, we need to revisit the checkbox. By checking this off, we can now set the end date to the aforementioned concept. Now click on the new button that just appeared. There are a few choices, but we will choose end of today. Now you won't have to worry about updating this dimension every time new data comes in. Let's move on to the time periods now. These time periods represent how you aggregate your data. For example, you may have monthly data, so you would check the month period at the minimum. Let's click on the preview tab and see how it looks. It would also make sense to roll the time dimension up to a year period so you can see how your business metrics look annually. Finally, there may be a particular way you want to show a date, so let's go over to the formatting tab. There are many ways you can format each time period. The defaults are usually good, but let's change the calendar month. We are going to choose this format so we can save some text space on the visualization that shows dates. Press OK to finish up. Finally, check it in so the dimension is available for use by business metrics. We now have a time dimension that we can attach to a business metric that has a column of type date as its dimension. This will allow us to group, filter, and drill down by time periods on this business metric. We will show how to connect this dimension to a business metric in a subsequent video. This concludes our tutorial on how to create a time dimension.